Welcome to First Minister's Questions Review. This time uh, we're reduced in numbers, but not in quality, let me assure you. And uh, so today we have uh, Norrie Stewart, myself Stuart Lockhead, and um, a short review, no doubt. You never can tell. That might, a rant might develop uh, about the performances at First Minister's Questions from Hollywood today. Well, Norrie, for overall, first impressions. Um, much of a muchness. The Labour Party have become um, a one-issue question time party. Once again, it's the NHS. Um, Joanne's still making speeches. I would say, wouldn't she up on that? She's ceased to improve today. Um, wasn't impressed at all. Um, it's obvious that their strategy is to give whoever's most popular in the Scottish government a Play the man. It's a bit like, it's, it is actually like football. Leading striker, hack him down with your defence. Not, to, well, don't play football. I kept a note of how many times uh, Nicola Sturgeon's name was mentioned. <laughs> Six times Joanne Lamont mentioned Nicola Sturgeon. Um, and frankly, I think it's disgusting. Jack McConnell today in the Scotsman's talking about how it should be more friendly, it should be about policy, etc, etc, and the Labour Party just go in and give them a kick in. Anna Sawas in his speech at the start of the week, same thing, it was all about giving the SNP a kick in. They have ceased to be, in my opinion, a real political party. They are so scared of the SNP that all they have in their armory is insults. Well, as I say, to me, I, you know, with it's, regard to that, it, it is like the the lower division team in the cup facing the serious opposition, and the only way they can make any hope of winning is to play the man, is to send the big defendants in to hack at the leading players on the opponent's side, well, the, and that I, seems to be their strategy. Jackie Bailey. Alex Salmon was talking about 88% um, satisfaction rate. patient satisfaction with the NHS. Jackie Bailey's sitting in the background shouting, it doesn't he matter. Well, it's exactly what does matter. No, Everybody right. would like it to be 100%. It's, going to be, it's impossible. You're talking about a massive health service. But the, the, the thing, the argument is ridiculous because the health service is improving. Right? I'm All okay. Salmon's saying is that they need better information to know exactly where the weak points are. I, f I just find that it, it's childish. <clears throat> you know? Okay, I, 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 I think it's worth saying that I'm, I keep expecting, given that uh, Joanne keeps making these speech, speeches and they're getting, becoming more and more speeches, less oh. and less a question, when I, I keep expecting Alex Salmon to finally say, well, when, you know, what's the question? Yeah. You've made a speech, which part of me do you want me to respond to? Because it goes on and on and on. Now, you would you would think that the presiding officer would make some comment about that because she she did she did about a backbench back Drew, Drew Smith Drew Smith chased him on. She, she, yes she chastised him uh, and I have to say I'm very suspicious about what's happening with the presiding officer she was off ill for two or three weeks she's back she made a mistake in the opening <laughs> yes she Asked Joanne Lamont to phrase her first question, Joanne Lamont did, then she said... She had asked her up for the answer and called her Ruth, Ruth Davidson. Davidson. No, no, that, slip. It's not alone. It's not, sorry, it's not alone. I watched, sometimes there's some fairly dull Hollywood stuff on TV and you flick around and suddenly up it comes. I watched her uh, in action earlier this week, possibly yesterday, I don't know, the day before. And I'm sorry, there's something not right about the presenting officer. She's not not confidently dealing with this, the, she's like a, a, I don't know, a probationary school teacher and that can't even control the class. Yeah, well, it's, 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 I'm it's, sorry, it's not, you can't defend her, just, you think I'm attacking her, no, I'm attacking the institution, the respectability or the respect that the Parliament, Holyrood, can expect is, is being diminished by the presiding officer. Certainly, I mean, this, I mean, Simon does the same with his answers. He does troll on a bit. 
and it could all be, I mean, you know my opinion, I think sometimes he's just much so more effective of getting up, giving yeah. a one more answer. Mm -hmm. um, difficult with the health service mm -hmm. report, he, he had to kind of explain it. Um, I, it's just all turning into a circus for me. And then Ruth Davison comes out with this bloody nonsense about, um, I have to look it up, the, <laughs> the food scandal. Uh, there wasn't a food scandal in Scotland. It happened south of the border. Mm -hmm. I don't think there was one instance where food was removed from shelves in Scotland, was it? I imagine that, that yeah, no, the, the, the big supermarkets did. The Lidl and well, Tesco. Well, certainly didn't food. get any ha ha headlines. Yeah, but Scottish headline. butchers are having a great time. Their oh, yeah. sales are up by 20%. I've heard, yeah, yeah. And she accuses Salmon of cutting funding from the Food Services well, that, that, Association. That, that, he didn't deny that, so that must be, that must, must be true. I would imagine he didn't deny but that. Left, but left them independent of government. Uh, which was Whereas then in Westminster, they've taken powers off them and taken them into government. Why did they do that? Oh, I think it's so that they can control uh, the various red tape measures for their buddies in the big food industry companies. Ah, uh, well that's a good explanation. I would imagine. I'm surprised that, that nobody said um, maybe I can't. Sam, it's not such a response Sam would make. To be honest, he's a bit more diplomatic about that. But uh, someone at some point could have said it took the Irish to find that to, to find this problem. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. found in Britain. Wasn't yeah. found in Germany. Wasn't found in France. It was the Irish that found well, it. Well, I mean, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know if the food agency in Scotland still does random testing, but they don't in England. So they were never going to find it until somebody else said, "Oh, I think there's horse meat in this." You know? I mean, is it a big deal? Not to me. I'll eat horse. You know, I don't have a problem with it. Um, well, neither do I. I'm going to taste a horse burger, but nobody seems to have managed to get them onto the market yet. But again, <coughs> Ruth Davidson's got the same problem she's got every week. There is basically nothing she can stand up and be critical of. She, she um, this is it. Every week she, 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 she attacks, a, 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 apparently, a cut in services north of the border and then every time Salmon says, well, your government is imposing all these slashing, <laughs> smashing, smashing grab. grab. Oh yes, he got that, he got it back at that. She uh, used the term smashing grab during a crisis about the, the one million pound cut in the FSA Scotland's budget. But he uh, used it straight back I'm again. I'm very surprised he didn't uh, do it for the tax on the oil. Tax on the oil? Uh, Gideon, sorry, sorry, the Gideon, Chancellor, Mr. Of the, the Chancellor of the Exchequer uh, hit them with a windfall tax that was that was genuine smash and grab. Oh yeah, yeah, I yeah. I didn't know it was coming. Yeah, yeah, that's what you mean. That's fair enough. But I mean, what what can she say? She can't. I mean, Carlos' pat on the back for when the National Health Service was doing well was more effective than anything. That was the other week, a couple, yeah, of, weeks a couple of weeks ago. Yes, yeah, more he, effective. You're right. He was than anything Ruth, Ruth Davidson done. I think, that, I think what she lacks is gravitas. She may be a very good. She, well, she's a she's professional. Not, she's not an official foul. Yeah, but she's a professional presenter. That was she used to present on television, so she knows how to do that. And to, and to, and to, and to, I'm doing. I'm doing what she does, which you know. And she knows how to do that, but she doesn't understand well, she can upping neither, and lowering the tone. She can neither be the matriarch that um, the Anna Anna Goldie, Goldie was, was yeah. who could, in a lot, a lot of ways, she would look to Simon and have a little joke with him and then slap him. Yeah. You know, and that was effective because it was light-hearted enough and Simon didn't feel the need to attack. Mm -hmm. Ruth Davidson's tried being the hard man. That didn't work because Simon gave her a kick in. She's tried being funny. That doesn't even work because Sam and Gabriel are kicking. You know, she's not got a leg to but stand I, I think all I was saying was that, it, that one little um, standing up, but Jackson Carlow, when he stood up a couple of weeks ago and made his point and complimented them, uh, the government, even if, it, even if it was being ironic, it, it just showed her up for the lack yeah. of the depth that yeah. she's got. Yeah, it really did. It did. And also, she, don't forget, in the last couple of weeks, she had a speech which went almost unnoticed. But where she was, uh, we, should, we should now be considering, I think it's Devo Plus, I'm never quite sure what Devo well, it is. The, the but she had, she had drawn a red line in her campaign to get, yeah, to get the leadership. This is as this far is as line as in the sand, is as far as we go. Well, she had a more recent speech where she's taken on Willie Rennie's uh, obsession, which is the nursery care for two-year-olds. 
asking for funding for two-year-old, the 40% least well-off two-year-old two year should get it. So if nothing else, the Indy referendum has forced the Tories to turn a little bit more human than they used to be. No mention of vouchers or any of that, just this is what we should do. So that's well, quite the interesting. There, uh, but the Tory situation in Scotland is they're in permanent opposition with no prospect of ever being in power, and that colours what kind of party they are. And, 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 and we can we count, it seems to me, whoever leads, I'm just surprised well, because I couldn't see Anna Goldie moving down south. She's, you know, she's no doubt got a strong family roots right in Glasgow, but Ruth, you could see her moving down to Surrey or Wiltshire. Thing. Well, to get the her. other interesting thing was Farage. Did no mention of him. Well, with his spiel, UKIP's coming to Scotland. They must be crapping themselves. They must be terrified because they're not as right wing as they are down south, but they can't be as centrist as they need to be to get votes. We're talking you, about the Tories here. The so. Tories. You kept come in, and they could cut a big chunk of that. Well, as I say, you're looking for the potential UKIP. Nine percent, according to the polls. Not in Scotland. Support. Nine percent support in Scotland. Well, that must, must be from a very small sample, but hey, well, okay, I'll need to take your word for that it. That was on the BBC. Um, well, I would say they're looking for their constituency almost entirely from the unionists, not just the unionists, the loyalists, you know, the Ranger fans, the, wet, the flag wavers. That's where the UKIP will be concentrating their, uh, well, their he campaign. He totally disparaged Stur uh, Sturgeon. He ripped it to pieces. Basically, he called them an amateur which will not go down well. He's obviously not looking to get any votes for the women. SNP. He's not getting any women. No, for all for women by the sounds of it, because... Uh, the, li the lunatic right-wing fringe he's going for, I think. Well, and we know what they say. They wave Union Jacks, and they, go and they support Rangers. Well, Willie, Willie Rennie... The... Why did he bother getting up? He got... Yes, he got... No. I mean, back to rain times, he repeated the question that yeah. Joanna Lamont had flogged to death unsuccessfully. Why did you say, waving his paper, you know, peace in our time? It does, yes, does does he think that's statesmanlike? That was something? interesting the way that the camera was uh, cut back to doing that. Uh, they don't always do very much of that, the, the directors at Hollywood TV. But uh, yeah, waving his bit of paper. And I'm not sure what he meant by it. I don't know what emphasis he was hoping to make by waving oh, it. I just, I find the whole thing amateurish, salmon head and shoulders above them, again. Again, his anger, when he, and, and when, usually, he really, when, well, he, when he releases his anger, it's always a powerful attack. Well, and I've noticed that he never does it until he's the last one to speak. Is that what the timing is? I need to check yeah. on that. You could be right. Yeah, yeah. He, he does it and, and he gets the last word and he gets his shiny boots on and gives him a kick. Kicking. Um, the... The, the other thing I noticed, Sand actually stood up and defended Nicola Sturgeon. Yes. So he normally just ignores it. Yeah, well, that was, I think he's more or less pointing out, as I, think, as I said off camera, um, that the strategy, quite clearly, the Labour strategy, quite clearly, is to play the, the man, the woman, the man, play the man as it's called, and not the policy. And. Um, they, used, they spent a long, long time attacking Salmon. Well, they obviously feel that's been successful. And now they're attacking Sur Stur Sturgeon, because Sturgeon's now in the limelight. She's responsible for the SNP and the Scottish Government's um, referendum. And at what point do you think that the SNP are going to start attacking seldom seen Joanna Lamont? Joanna Lamont. She's never on telly now, she doesn't make big speeches. No, it's, it's left to everybody else. Well, Al Alistair Darling in the No campaign, never seen. He's very protected when he does appear. You know, oh, yeah. he's, you know they're, they're so scared. Um, if the was... only one that stands up, puts his head above the parapet, is Anna Sawas. And I'm not sure that's exactly who you need up there for them. Well, he doesn't represent working class, ordinary no, Scots, he's, well, that, uh, he's a millionaire's son, his family have been embroiled in, in fraud cases, you know, £800,000 know, fraud cases. The, Lab the Labour Party have a huge problem with that. They don't look like 
they represent the roots. Not at Westminster. Certainly, it's a bit better at Hollywood, but they don't look credible when they argue for the poor. No, they don't. I mean, you know. And if you're in the political bubble, you know they're not. You know the decision to go for Middle England was thought up in the back room of either some Oxford or Cambridge college. Yes, and it's one nation. Yes, one nation. As opposed to behind Ed Miliband's speeches, these one nation, which nation is the question? Uh, well, we know what, what they mean. Fascinating aside, nothing to do with FMQs, but it obviously provides a background, was that um, after all these attacks on the process of, of whether an independent Scotland would have it would easily get into international organisations like the UN or the EU. Lord Malach Brown, former minister in the, the Labour, last Labour government, formerly a deputy director general at the United Nations, a very senior diplomat, completely rubbished on the radio this morning. Uh, the, all these attacks on the possibility of Scotland easing into Europe easing into the UN, completely demolished it. He said it was just people just make, trying to make political nonsense. And he's, he said, in fact, was he not thick with Tony Blair and Faulkner? Was he not the third one that shared the flat when they were young? I, I, I don't know the guy at all, um, which probably means I should trust him more than I do any of the others. He's yeah. obviously not one that in grandstanding all this thing. There's no actual reference to I, the, I, What about the disappearing speech of Anna Sarbar, which was trailed from Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and only made on Monday. Well, there was and then a, it was a BBC strike on Monday. Well, there was the question, and um, there was a question today from, who was it, the SNP, Kenneth? No, it wasn't Kenneth. It was Kenny Gibson. Was it? No, he was asking about, it was a, perhaps a constituency thing, about the, the fatal accident. In the Jim Eady. Jim uh, Eady asked about BBC redundancies. Sawas lost a speech. Um, Sturgeon lost a speech and Ruth Davidson lost a speech because of the strike. Didn't get much in the way of publicity. So effectively the BBC in Scotland political commentator shut down on Monday. Mm -hmm. Now if they're going to lose, and they're, they're was quoting what, 9 out of 30 of the redundancies. Or Scotland, Scottish as opposed to Scottish, a third. Oh, but which is this? Some senior journalists. And that was quoted from, yeah. well, the N NUJ, I think, that Jim Eady quoted today. I'm not sure what the, what the context of the, the, the 30 was. Was the 30, 30 I don't, I don't know what it over the, over the piece in, in the BBC. Um, but that is worrying. That is worrying. Well, I, think I, I mean, as you said earlier, Bella Caledonia, Wings Over Scotland, Newsnet Scotland. They've all got bigger readerships than the Scotsman or the Herald, and yet you know, they never get well, mentioned. Well, Wings, Wings reckons he's on about 30,000. All right, well, Scotsman's 32,000. You know, um, so, but if you if you look at that... And yeah, you know, these people never get quoted yeah, on the BBC. Yeah. The, the Scotsman's turning into... And, Jesus, it was a Tory paper. It's turning into a mouthpiece for the Labour Unionists. And the, I was left with the impression, I, I read Michael Kelly's piece today, well, we'll call it a piece, we'll call it a piece of shit. Imagine what he writes, I haven't but read this one. It was odd. Um, and in the same paper, Jack McConnell is saying everybody has to be nice to each other because we're all going to have to work together after 2014. Uh, Michael Kelly just basically was vindictive. But the, the thought that struck me was, I don't think he's writing for the Scottish public. I don't think he's writing for anybody Ma but the wavering Labour Party. I, I think they are terrified of that they get a, a big name Labour guy, woman, coming out for Indy. Mm. And I think all this invective, all this nastiness is, a, is as much about keeping their party in line, keeping them 100% unionist for fear a couple of the big boys turn around and say, well, actually, do you know? Well, look, let's, uh, let's try and sum up and give them our scores. Um, Alec, what are we going to win? I wasn't overly week? impressed with Alec. So, I mean, he did the job. You know, he's never, he's never going to fall below the level, you know, 
of the rest of them. It's just not going to happen, not well, unless he has a heart given attack. Given how, how close Joanne came last time to, you know. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm going to give him an eight. I wasn't, it wasn't yeah. great today. Sure. Uh, I just, I mean, she was neither fish nor fowl. She, you know, she wasn't, she didn't do her ranting and raving, which can be effective. She often looks more comfortable doing that. She just, she tried sarcasm and it doesn't work. When your eyes are shifting, moving side to side, it just Why are they making work. speeches? That's the problem. She, they don't seem to be able to get her to be I think that's where Sam sharp. I think, that, I, I think that's where Sam uh, doesn't. That's why he's not going to get ten for me either this week. Or close to that. In particular today, Joanne Lamont went on and on reading a speech which ignored announcements that had already been made and an answer that had already, already been given. And they're such rambling speeches. Sam would be perfectly entitled to turn around and say, "Well, what is your actually? Your, what is the question?" Hmm. And as I said earlier about the presenting officer, I'm sure, I'm sorry, it's, it's her responsibility to straighten all these speeches down. Well, Questions, I, please. I mean, I mean, Judge, she's not shaking. She's obviously getting a bit more comfortable, but no more effective. I'll, I'm going to give her a three because she hasn't, she hasn't, she wasn't today as bad as she has been, but she wasn't effective today. today. Ruth, competent. Um, Two. And we really. Well, he, what's the paper waving thing about? I don't understand that. Is that to get attention? You know, I'm here. Please I've got me. this. My piece of information is valid, and uh, I've got it on a piece of paper, and you're not answering. That's kind of what he's making waving it at. Uh, again, he was not the fish and foul, which is probably just as well because when he's foul, he's terrible. When he's being the diplomat, he's much better. I'll, I'll give him a two. I felt he was being fairly irrelevant today. The and the presiding officer? I don't think she did a good job. She, she needs to... I can understand how she would be... She's going to be accused of being partial. I doesn't. think it's more serious than that. I don't think she's... Uh, I've no idea what her health problems were or been. It's well, a gold bladder or something, so. Well, but uh, it, it, something. Well, her, her problem is she will, if she shuts La, uh, Lamont up and tells her to ask the question, she will be accused of being partial. Okay, but she, she can then do it to someone too. Well, I think there's a case for her standing down. Right? I'm Question's not, I, I agree, I don't think she's, I think she's demeaning the, 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 the parliament. It's she not. was prepared to tell Drew Smith to shut up and get on with <laughs> That was easy. She'd already done. She was, at that point she was handling backbenchers' questions and that is easy to handle because that's the presiding officer has gravitas and authority if you ever watch them. The, they're the dull things <laughs> and I occasionally watch them but handling the big, so-called big beasts of Salmond and the party leaders always seems to be going be, be beyond her. But you're going to give her a score? I'm going to give her a two. I wasn't, I wasn't impressed with it. Well, I'll have to say, I'll start with Alex. Alex, I agree, he wasn't as good as last week. Um, and I, I'll take note of what you said about his notices when his anger, when he allows his anger to be expressed. It's usually nearly always when he has the last word. Uh, but he was certainly defended, uh, Nicholas Sturgeon. Eight, I don't know. I know I, I, he was just average. For, average for him to be a seven. Joanne. Okay, she gets. She gets some, She gets four points for. Because she's no longer shaking quite so much or so nervous but the total dependence on a prepared speech but are we giving her points for beta blockers you think that's what she's taking oh, i don't know she certainly calmed down but she still looks um, shifty i'll give her one more for perhaps you feel like take, I'll give her one more and then take it off again one more for well, she did have issues to. I mean, we, we all knew it was going to be the NHS because there have just been a report announced. But, no, four. I've changed my mind there. Ruth, uh, as I say, no, not worthy of anything. Three, I'll give her a three, simply because she's she knows how to stand up and speak. And Wee Willie, if he'd picked anything else, I'd have given him a score. I'll give him nothing. <laughs> Presiding officer, I'm very disappointed with her. I'm actually worried about her. I don't want to be rude about her, but she's not doing the job. 
and uh, she gets three. So we're um, well, that's Alex. Streets ahead. Yeah, back to the, well, last week he was last morning ago he wasn't so far ahead, was he? Joe, seven. Half, half of, and actually looking at that, I think you were well over generous there. Uh, Giving her four. Yeah, I think so. Ruth, a five. I can, sometimes I, I, did, I do feel sorry about Ruth because she's not got a lot of ammunition to throw. Willie Rennie, how, I mean, do they not speak to each other? Well, they must know what they, yes, they must know what they're going to go on. Well, why make it easy for Salmon? Why give him the same subject twice? Which he obviously well briefed on. Whatever he no. says, he's going to do. Anyway, as you say, a zero. I gave him a two, but the speaker, I think, I think there is a problem there. I think, as you do, that she needs to get the gloves off. She needs to slap Lamont down. She needs to slap Salmon, uh, Salmon down when he starts his lists. Mm. You know, it needs to be answer the question, ask a bloody question. Mm. Boom. Well, so it's been a not the most exciting of FMQs, but uh, as usual, we're here to review it, and we'll be back next week. And thanks again for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>